to thee. You'll hear me here from Country Diggers. I got this beautiful coin in the mail the other day. It is the RMS Titanic Heart of the Ocean, right there. And on the back is Rose Morgan Dawson Blake Calvert. Um, 1895 to 1999, okay? And if you'll notice that little scene right there um, of Leonardo DiCaprio's character, Jack, uh, was sketching Kate, Winless, Kate Winslet's character, uh, Rose. And so I'm gonna go into a little history on who the real Rose Calvert was, okay? And um, this is going to be from Real Rundown. I'm going to be reading it from Real Rundown. It was from KRC, and it was updated July 22nd, 2023. So I'll be reading from that. So the real Rose Calvert from Titanic. Inspiration behind Rose from Titanic. It's been over a hundred years since the first and last voyage of the RMS Titanic. Uh, when I was doing some research, I came across interesting information. I learned of Beatrice Wood, the person that director James Cameron used as a model for the character Rose DeWitt Buckader Calvert. When I sat down to research Wood, I found her to be an exceptional person. I will attempt to sum up her rather eventful life, which is rather difficult to do when she lived to be 105 years old. When asked what her secret to longevity was, she said, art books, chocolates, and young men. <laughs> Facts and fiction about Rose from Titanic. Rose's character was based upon a real woman, Beatrice Wood. Both the character and the person were art, real person were artists. The real person did not travel on the Titanic. The screenwriter was inspired by Beatrice's humor, charm, and creativity. Beatrice Wood's Early Life Beatrice Wood was born in San Francisco, California in 1893 to wealthy and socially conscious parents. At the age of five, her family moved to New York City. Her mother immediately began to prepare Beatrice for her eventual coming out party. She sent her to Paris for a year in a convent. She was enrolled in finishing school and she enjoyed summer holidays in Europe. While in Europe, she was exposed to art galleries, museums, and theater. In 1912, when she was supposed to throw her much-planned coming-out party, and the year the Titanic sank without Beatrice aboard, she canceled the plans and defiantly told her mother that she wanted to become a painter. As you can imagine, her mother once again set out to do things in high style. She sent her to France with a chaperone to study painting. Beatrice wasn't impressed with the school and moved to Givery in the hometown of Monet, when many, where many aspiring artists seemed to flock. She got in a fight with her chaperone and took up residence in an attic. Her mother got wind of this and came to give, give her, give her knee to check on her. She found the conditions in the attic not to be her liking and promptly took her back to Paris. In Paris, she shifted her focus to theater. She took private lessons, but with the onset of World War I, her parents thought it best to bring her back to New York. Her mother tried her best to prepare Beatrice for the New York stage, but she joined the French National Repertory Theater. 
She played in over 60 roles under the stage name Mademoiselle pa uh, Patricia. Marcel Duchamp. While working at the theater, she was told about a Frenchman who was in the hospital and lonely. Someone suggested that she go visit him since she spoke French. During her visit, second visit, she was introduced to the man's friend, Marcel Duchamp. Du Duchamp. Duchamp was best known for his painting Nude Descending a Staircase. Painting Nude Descending a Staircase. She and Duchamp hit it off immediately, and he would go on to introduce her to Walter and Louise Arnsberg, who held artsy parties at their contemporary home. Beatrice was exposed to the data movement Dada movement, which is best described as an anti-art movement. Duchamp also introduced her to the writer Henry Perret, Perry Roche, who would become her first love interest. Duchamp, Roche, and Beatrice seem to have some sort of love triangle. It is thought that this was the inspiration for Rose's book, I mean Roach's book, Jules et Jim. He was the first man to break her heart. In 1918, Beatrice left New York and ran off to Montreal. Of course, her mother tracked her down with a private detective. Her good friend Paul, who was the theater manager, with whom she shared an apartment, convinced her that the only way to be out from under her mother's thumb was to marry him. So she did. It was a marriage of convenience, mostly for Paul, who managed to use her and her friends to support his gambling habit. Beatrice's parents saw to it that the marriage was dissolved years later. When Beatrice returned to New York, she found that the Dada movement had died down. Duchamp was traveling in Europe. The Arnsbergs had moved to Los Angeles, and Roche had gone back to Paris. She then fell in love with the British actor and director Reginald Pole. But Pole would also end up breaking her heart. She decided to move to Los Angeles to be near the Arnsbergs. Beatrice Wood Masters Ceramics. One, on one of her trips, Beatrice purchased a set of Barku dessert plates with a stunning luster glaze. When she couldn't find a matching teapot, she decided she would just simply figure out how to make one herself. She enrolled in a ceramics course at Hollywood High School in 1933. She soon figured out it wasn't as easy as it looked, but she was intrigued with the glazed chemistry and practiced at throwing pots. She eventually began to sell some of her pieces to support herself. She later trained under ceramic artists Glenn Lukens and Gertrude and Otto Natzler. By 1947, Beatrice Wood's career as a potter was established enough that she decided to build a home in Ojiha, California. She had been included in a major exhibit in major exhibitions at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Major department stores like Neiman Marcus, Gump's, and Marshall Fields placed orders with her. She began teaching ceramics for the Happy Valley School, now called the Besant, Besant Hill School, and operating her studio and showroom. Spiritualist, philanthropist, author. 
Beatrice's house was across the street from the speaker and thinker Kiz Kishimuti. I don't know what that word is. She was a fan of his philosophy and and had been traveled and had even traveled to Europe to hear him speak. According to her biography, she had always embraced a life that combined the wisdom of the East, positive thinking, and a strong work ethic, and dated dadaist sense of humor and a romantic view of life. In 1974, Beatrice moved to another location on a 450-acre parcel of land in Oji Valley, owned by the Happy Valley Foundation, with the understanding that the home would be gifted to the Happy Valley Foundation upon her death. Then in the late 1980s, she published her first book called The Angel Who Wore Black Tights. Only a few years later, she published her autobiography, I Shot Myself. <laughs> she went on to publish Pinching Spaniards and 33rd Wife of a Maharaj, A Love Affair in India. She also wrote books under the pen name Countess Lola Skrivinsky. Or Skrivinsky, yeah, I guess. The Birth of Rose Calvert When James Cameron was working on the character of Rose DeWitt Bucrater Calvert for the film Titanic, he had already envisioned a feisty character with a dominating mother. Bill Paxton's wife was reading Wood's autobiography at the time. Reading it himself, Cameron discovered the perfect real-life version of the character he was creating. James Cameron invited Beatrice to the premiere of Titanic, but she declined due to her health. Bear in mind, she was a mere 104 years old at the time. So Cameron and Gloria Stewart, who plays the older Rose, defined dined with Beatrice in her home and presented her with a video of the movie. She vehemently, vehemently declined to watch it, saying that she knew it would be a sad movie and that it was too late in life to be sad. She died only a few days later at the age of 105. It should be noted that actress Gloria Stewart celebrated her 100th birthday on July, 20, uh, July 4th, 2010. It sounds like she's very much like Beatrice. Sadly, Stewart passed away Sunday, September 26, 2010. Uh, let's see. Casting Kate Winslet. A oh okay okay casting Kate Winslet. A Madrid of actresses were considered for the role of Rose. Strong early contenders were Drew Barrymore and Claire Danes, who had previously worked with Leonardo DiCaprio in uh, William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. Other names in contention were Jennifer Aniston, Nicole Kidman, and Madonna. Ugh, Madonna. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> Kate Winslet has admitted that she was brought to tears after reading the script. She became, she became determined to get the leading role. This took a fair amount of effort as she was not yet a big star back in 1996. According to an interview she gave to Rolling Stone, Winslet was able to get Cameron's phone number from her agent. She was able to reach him on his car phone while he was driving and told him that he would be mad not to cast her as Rose. The gutsy performance perseverance paid off as Winslet was rewarded with an audition. 
Afterwards, she sent Cameron a bouquet of roses with the note that read, From Your Rose. Beatrice's Mama of Data Documentary. As a bonus, check out Todd Niff's 1993 documentary, Beatrice Wood, Mama of Data. The film, ex- uh, okay, uh, the film uh, details Beatrice's life and careers, particularly her experiences in the data movement of 1910s. Marcel uh, Bo- Duchamp is discussed at length, as is, as is Henry Pierre Roche, whose 1953 book, Jules and Jim, which Francois Tuffrant uh, turned into a 1962 film, was inspired by the relationship between Wood, Duchamp, and himself. And also, if you didn't know, James Cameron was the one who actually um, sketched the picture of Kate Winslet's Rose, character Rose. He's the one that actually did the sketching of it. So, hope y'all enjoyed that, and uh, see you back soon. Bye.